Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Cornerstone Cadre of Cornerstone Creative Studios. My name is Jesse Hansen. I am here tonight. I am going to be inking a page from American Eagle number one, which we were humbly funded back a while back on Indiegogo. And here I am working on the pages. All the pages have been penciled by our esteemed Javier Lugo. And I am doing the inks. I had two people help me with the background inks to kind of catch up on things as the holidays kicked in. Easter came about and we were running a little bit behind schedule. But we're working diligently to get the book out to you guys and hopefully you like the results. Right now, this, this is page six, which I went ahead and did all the inks on because um, I got the background inkers. They worked on all the pages beyond to help me do the background stuff and you know, all the tedious things that kind of slow me down. Uh, those were, those were page, pages were inked by Kevin Leverett and uh, Tom Rapka. And Tom did a bunch of them, so kudos to him. And thank you for your help, guys. And uh, let's get on to the fun stuff. You're not here to listen to me talk. You're here to watch me ink. So um, I'm using Manga Studio. Uh, let's see, does it say what version? doesn't matter. It's Manga Studio, so it's older. Um, I have Clip Studio, but I don't really care for it as much, and I've told people that in the past. So it is what it is. I like Manga Studio. I like the brushes I've created for it. So uh, let's get to it. Let me switch the modes over here so that we can uh, watch what I'm doing here. Let me share my work screen. How come it's not showing... Let's see. Let me bring it up so it actually shows the proper window. Um, share, share screen window. There it is. Manga Studio has issues sometimes sharing its screen. I don't know why, but it is what it is. Here we are. And if anybody wants to join me, by all means, feel free to come on in, join the fun, and uh, let's get to work. Actually, let me do this real quick. I need to um, excuse me while I do this real quick. I have to uh, stop sharing real quick. Copy the clipboard. Do, 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 do. Share it back. Because again, nobody wants to look at my ugly mug. They want to see. Cool artwork that Javier has created. All right, ladies and gents. Let me uh, do one last thing, and I promise, I promise I'll get back to work. Um, and all righty. And I'll be uh, showing this on the YouTube channel, so if anybody missed it, they can always join me later. Um, you can also jump on my YouTube channel now. If you happen to see it here, then great. I am going to mute this so we don't have to hear that. And if you want to join me, you can um, join in the chats there, and I will answer your questions and what have you along the way. So join me in the conversation. All righty, folks. All right, here we go. Back to work. Let me grab a pen. Now, I have a Yuan tablet, so that's, that's what I'm using now. Now that I've switched over to digital inking for the most part, you get comfortable here. I'm old, so, you know, if I'm not comfortable, then I'm hurting. And if I'm hurting, I can't do work. And that doesn't help anybody. As you can see, I've already done a lot of this page. I've started putting in, like, all the little tedious stuff here and stuff like that. Um, action page, as you can see. American Eagle, surrounded by the Viet Cong. And having to fight his way out. Um... I'm just doing this real quick. A few people here. I got to spawn back to a couple people here. Um, let's see. Anybody else? All right. Anyway, I'm here to work, so let's work. Now, Javier left these really loose for me. Thank you, Javier. No, I'm just kidding. 
um, it's background stuff. So it's not like it's brain surgery to just do some outline stuff. I still like to do it as tight as I can without being too tight. You know what? Let me cheat. This is my normal uh, working environment, so I'm kind of makeshifting as I go along here. I'm hoping that somebody from the American Eagle creative team would join me tonight because then they can do some talking, keep you all entertained while I work because sometimes when I get concentrating and focusing on what I'm doing, I'm not exactly the most talkative person in the world, but uh, I'll try. If you all put in your comments and stuff like that, I'll be much more apt to talk. Um, not because I don't like talking, but talking doesn't get the work done, you know? I'm doing this mainly live just because it's something fun to do. I don't get the opportunity to do it as much as I'd like to. And uh, people like to see progress. And we've been a little bit quiet on the Cornerstone side of things because we're not only are we working on this, we're also trying to get the next two uh, crowdfunding campaigns going together. That's going to be Kinetic and Cur of the Nexus. Um, this session is going to be all about American Eagle and Jordan Hayoto's journey as a center of liberty and things to make the world go round in a positive way. The thing that makes American Eagle different is the fact, one is its origin. And not, I don't mean just origin of how he got his powers because, you know, those come and go, but the origin of who he is. Um, you'll understand a lot more once you pick up the book. But um, the fact that his family were actually Japanese and he's Japanese American, puts a different twist on things because, you know, it, it does delve into the emotional sides of things where, you know, he, he wasn't your, you know, blue eyed, blonde haired, typical American that even, and don't get me wrong here, 
I am a big fan of characters like Captain America and stuff like that. Huge fan of that. Um, but not everybody can relate even as a sickly or um, weaker individual as Steve Rogers was before he took the serum and everything and became Captain America, guess what? He was still just a standard white boy that happened to luck out. Uh, got picked. You know, there's, there's a lot behind that, I know. But long story short, not everybody can relate with them. Um, so... Marvel Comics, they've seen that too. And, you know, they, they're trying to do different things with the, the title of Captain America. And I like that. I like it. Um, do I think overall it's going to be overly, overly accepted? No, I, I don't. Um, the reason being is because Steve Rogers has been around so long and they've tried to branch it out. They've even tried to branch it out with, like, powered beings, like, you know, the Patriot and excuse me, stuff like that, and John Walker, and you see, well, that went, fans just weren't into it, because they already been vested in Steve Rogers, um, and Steve Rogers himself is such a great character, you know, and they've stocked so much into him, you can't really blame the fans, you know, I mean, I'm a huge Steve Rogers fan, he's a huge Captain America fan, but when you go to try to change these things, or force them down people's throats, it's going to seem forced and it's going to seem fake. Or like people are doing things just because the masses demand it. Which is one of the problems with the industry this day, these days. So, as I've discussed in other things where I believe in just creating new characters. Wow, those are crazy concepts. Even if Let's say you create the same type of character or, um, shoot, let's just say everything about the character is the same as what has been done before, okay? Marvel sees that too. Look at Miles Morales. They created a whole new character with him, which is wonderful because it's something that a different audience can, can get behind, can really get behind because it's not the same thing. It's not changing something that's already there. It's creating something fresh and new. Yay, that's what comics is all about. Comics is about creating. And uh, you know, that's that's what we're here for. We're here to create, entertain, have some fun doing that which we like. Um, and that's what we're hoping to do here. So what we're doing, uh, the whole point of all that rambling, was we wanted to go a different route. We wanted to make it so that, yes, he will understand what racism is about. He will understand what segregation is about. He will understand what it's like to have to earn and fight for everything he's got to be part of this country. And yes, he loves dearly. He's not one of those characters who's going to resent what he's had to go through. He's not going to be one of those characters that says, you know, I have to do this because of my family. No, he's doing it because he loves the country. But why does he love the country? He loves the country because of the opportunity that it gave his family. You know, he, he hasn't, his family took the chance. They came here, they, they were immigrants. And then sure enough, World War II happened. And well, during World War II, the Japanese were put in internment camps. Now, understandably, yes, I know it sounds horrible or whatever, but think about it, if at that time, the world was a scary place because nobody knew where the enemy was coming from. Um, so America, like anybody else would do, took those that might have a fear factor in them or it might be a threat, and they put them away in camps, which is kind of extreme, I know. But they put them away in camps, long story short, and so they could monitor them and say, okay, well, at least if the threat, you know, a potential threat is out of the way, we don't have to worry about it. It's one less thing we have to worry about. Well, what the son did, Jordan, he was already um, part of the services. So he said, you know what? Let me tell you what, because I want my family out of the internment camp. I want them to know what freedom is. I want them to not have to go through this. So let me volunteer my services and my skills, which 
had already proven themselves at this point. He wasn't just some snot-nosed kid saying, hey, I want to do this. He, he put his time in. He was already already a, a, a intelligence officer with the military. He had already done his time. He had already done through boot camp. He had already gone through all the special training. In fact, he was already overseas um, in Japan at the time. So they said, okay, let's use your abilities as a spy. And they had him doing that. Um, so he said, you know, just let me do this. And then uh, something happened, which I'll leave some of the origin story alone. Something happened where something went wrong or right, depending on your perspective, because it turned out okay. And um, he uh, ended up, long story short, becoming an American Eagle. Okay. Now, this first issue, we're doing something a little different. We are not doing the traditional, hey, this is the origin issue. This is where blah, 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 blah. I just gave you insight into what's coming ahead because that's not in this issue, folks. Um, in fact, this is after he's already been a hero for a while as American Eagle. And he's already gone through World War II. That's already happened and done and over with. This is during Vietnam, this story. And his time as American Eagle during the Vietnam era. Now, as you know, Vietnam was a very questionable time in American uh, military history. Let's switch over here real quick, make sure there's nobody tapping on my door or even any comments. Okay, nothing, clear. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, so during v Vietnam, like I said, there was very questionable decisions made by the local, the American government. And they got him questioning things. Well, as you know, what happens when you start questioning the powers to be, whether it's the government, whether it's business, whether it's corporations or whatever, they don't like it. So, um, Mm. But he can't say too much. I don't want to give away too much. Needless to say, he learns a valuable lesson, um, which will affect and alter the rest of his life. Now, one cool thing we did with this campaign is we did a uh, a tier in the crowdfunding campaign where you can actually be a recurring character. And we had someone take us up on that, which is really cool. And uh, this individual, as a result of taking advantage of that, he will actually be in all three issues as one of the members uh, one second here let me get this right uh, team eagle which is a team of specially trained soldiers which american eagle helps train to help him in his battle against the Viet Cong, and uh But as my point was, he will actually be one of those members, an actual character in the book, not just somebody walking around the street, which we had another tier for people that wanted to appear in the book. It was a little cheaper tier. And we were very humbly blessed with the fact that we had quite a few people jump on that or have their name in the book or be mentioned in there, which is really, really cool. So that was cool. We can name that team, folks. Better not hum too much. They might 
kick me off of YouTube or whatever. Copyright infringement. You hummed a certain song that we may have picked up somewhere in our analogs, analytics, or whatever it is. Heaven forbid, if she likes something other than made up nursery rhymes. You know, one time I was doing this uh, live video, and I had some Christian music playing in the background. So that's typically what I listen to for the most part. And they kicked me off Facebook. Now, I just got a note. Hold on a second. One second, folks. Ah, everyone, welcome. Hey, what's up? Daniel Horowitz himself, the writer of American Eagle. Welcome, How's it Dave. Going? Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up? Good to see you. Look at you all clean cut. Yes, I, I shaved yesterday. It was just getting hot, just getting really hot. Shaved? I ain't got a haircut since the last time yeah. I talked to you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. I'm not allowed to get a haircut. No? Well, not, not a haircut, but I'm not allowed to shave, I should say. How come? Um, the little lady thinks I look too young. Mm. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely lost a couple of years just by shaving. Uh, that's amazing, right? So I know. It's crazy. I was we live our whole like, lives trying to grow a beard. Then we cut it off because it's too much. I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've not had a beard in like eight years. Honestly. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I've seen you without one. And you, then, like, you you've, you've, you've had the, uh, you were growing, growing out the hair for a while, too. You are getting all the curls. Yeah, and I mean, on. during COVID, because I didn't want to get a haircut, but, you know, obviously now it's fine. Right, right. So how you been? Good. Yeah, pretty I mean, good. I mean, I, I know how you've been, but the people on the, in the loving public don't know. So Right, yeah, no. I'm, catch up, catch up at speed. What's going on? What's yeah, new? Yeah, doing great. You know, I'm. Just bought a place in Florida, so we're you know going to be mo my wife and I are going to be moving soon. So, uh, that's you really folks, you heard it here first. <laughs> yes, Exa exactly. I'm testing it out because of you know the humidity. Yeah, it's it. Well, right now, um, it's actually a nice time of the year. It's like right now today, it was hot, but it had a cool breeze, so it's, it's been a beautiful day mm -hmm. today. Nice. That's where I'm at. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Our new place, it is like a pool and a hot tub. And, you know, it's like I got a whole club and everything. So it, it should be nice. So it's I know nice where I'll be back. visiting when I hit, hit that area. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome anytime. Yeah, that's cool. Great. Yeah, this is one of the pages I finally got back to. I, I uh, had started a while back. Mm -hmm. Nice. And, yeah, uh, that's this, awesome. this, this one of the ones where I'm doing everything. Not one of the ones where they did the backgrounds on. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Of course, there's not much hey, background on this. So. Making great pro It really is coming together. Well, that's what we paid for, right? No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I just happened to have a few minutes, so I was like, you know what? Let me go live with this. Why not? No, that's all. I just I just saw your message, and I was like, oh, well, I'll hop on and say hello. Yeah, I mean, these are so unplanned and. Everything else, I never know when I'm going to get a moment to actually go right. Live. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 hard to know what your what your schedule is going to be. Yeah, especially my schedule. Oh my goodness! Between yeah. remodeling a house and house up for sale, and you oh know, my then, God, yeah. then the holidays because we always do like a big Easter thing at the house. So we oh, had, okay, yeah, we had like 20 people at the house this year. Oh wow, yeah, that's that's a lot to entertain like that. Well, yeah, that we always do. We did a. a 101 Easter egg hunt. Oh my God. And every Easter egg hunt, every Easter egg had a prize. Mm -hmm. So we had all the prizes numbered and everything else. Oh, wow. So if you found an egg, you got a prize. And I'm not talking about like, you know, little Dollar Tree prizes. I'm talking about like we had um, one of them was a, was a vase. It was actually a Murano glass vase worth of, you know, it, a, uh, we had a guy that works at the market and he said, I wouldn't sell that for less than 50 bucks. So oh, wow. prices like that. And then um, one was actually a $50. Um, the golden egg was a $50 egg, which mm. wasn't just an, you know, anybody can say here's 50 bucks or here's a gift card. But what we did is Iva had a, a bouquet of flowers made up where the flowers were actually dollars and fives and $10 bills. Mm. So it was actually a coronation of money. So that was wow. kind of cool. That's awesome. Then, yeah, that you know, must have been expensive to put together. Well, the thing is, with everything said and done, it with us, because you know, we used to have the gift shop. 
And, oh, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. So with us, we got a lot of stuff sitting in storage that really just collecting dust. So it works out great for prizes. Right. Because you know, you know me, I ain't got the money to go spend that kind of money. So of course, um, yeah, yeah. So that was really nice, and people had people had a lot of fun. And we did something different this year. We did it where every gift or every prize they get the prize, and on the prize they had a sticker with the number of the egg, and mm -hmm. next to it a scripture. So mm -hmm. everyone got to read scriptures every time they get a prize. So it was kind of cool. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. You know, if, you remember the reason for the season type thing. Of course. So it was, it, 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 it was really well. That's awesome. You know, so, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. You know, yeah, it's yeah. nice to have time with the family like that. Yeah. I, I, I've been trying more and more to kind of devote more time to it, to the family, and and still stay productive at the same time. And then once we get all the stuff situated with the house and everything else, it'd be, it'll be a lot easier. Right. Just, like right now, it's like we'll get a phone call. Hey, we want to show the house tomorrow. And well, you kind of have to, so right, of course. constantly make sure the house is ready, constantly make sure that you know if there's anything that we find has to get fixed quick or totally. it's taken care of. And it's just it's a nightmare, but so it'd be you, guys are, something you guys are selling and moving out of state, right? You mentioned probably. Um, okay. we haven't really narrowed it, I mean, totally canceled out the fact that we might stay in Florida. Mm -hmm. But we're definitely going to move out of the house, get a fresh start, because she has a lot of history there in that house. And oh, sure. With me, Cadre, and her, you know, we want to get like a fresh start. Yeah, and I can can't, understand. can't do that when you have ghosts of the past, you know, kind of thing. Right. No, of course, of course. But otherwise, I mean, I love the house myself, but, you know, I can also understand where she's coming from, too. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, Florida's changing a lot, too. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. And the market's incredible right now for for an actual seller so we're like you know what we might not get this chance in five to ten years so we oh better my God. Jump on it. yeah definitely so. I mean, my condo went up by like 10 grand in value and i just bought it like two months ago see even, yeah it's crazy so you might you might end up selling it before you even get in it <laughs> yes exactly you know i might just do some renovations and resell it who knows Rip that sucker. yeah shoot because that's one thing we thought about, too. It's like, you know, we sell this place. We're going to be in the same position trying to buy a place. So we're like, hmm. Right. So we even thought about home oh, for a while. You know? Right. If you're going to end up moving to a comparable cost of living area, it's not necessarily worth yeah. it. But if you're going to we go looking, somewhere cheaper. Right. So we were looking at, well, anywhere outside of Florida pretty much is cheaper. Um, oh, yeah. At least right now. Because, like, we looked in Tennessee, Georgia, and North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Every single one of those places. North Carolina is a little iffy because – depending on what part in North Carolina you're in. But Tennessee and Georgia, the, the land and houses are so much cheaper than here. It's not even oh, yeah. comparable. Definitely. I actually have some cousins who, um, they live in Florida, and they had a place in Beach Mountain, North Carolina. I've been a few times. It's pretty nice. Yeah. it's And the people in, in both all them areas are really, really good, really nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I'm a Kentucky boy originally, so. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, I know what it's, excuse me, I know what the, the culture difference is between people up there and down here. Mm, oh, sure. Down here. And it is. It's a world of difference. I mean, no knock on anybody that lives in Florida or anything like that, but a lot of people in Florida don't come from Florida. So, no. you know, it is what it is. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm one know, of them. I mean, I mean, look at you. A bunch of New Yorkers moving down here and stuff. I mean, come on. I think they've <laughs> said in the last two years that maybe like over 60,000 New Yorkers have moved to Florida. Yeah, and it's unsurprising. No, really. I mean, think about it. I know a lot of people left New York right away after the COVID and all that stuff, stuff hit because the whole state was pretty much shut down. Oh yeah. I mean, y'all got hit hard up there. Big. Time. Oh my God. Yeah, it was. It was hard. I mean, you know, it's fine now, but like, it was horrible. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, y'all were like actually literally stuck in your homes. I mean. I mean, you really couldn't go out. Like, I went to the grocery store. I had to go at like midnight. <gasps> no no but i went i went and i got covid at the grocery store at, and i was trying to avoid people but it's just like <laughs> it's how it is like that's how it is like that's oh, how it, wow. it was like that for like almost a year honestly Jeez, yeah, that's crazy man mm -mm. i lived in new yeah. york a little bit when i was real little i lived in upstate though it was like kingston area mm-hmm and uh, I've said it before, but man, it's a beautiful country up there. 
Oh upstate. my god. Yeah, there's there's a lot of great nature in New York too. It's not just the city, you know. That's what it's known for, but yeah, there's a lot more to it than that. It's a huge state. I mean, it takes over, I would say, like eight hours to drive from one end to the other. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. So especially I mean, once you hit the city, then you're taking another extra, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just, even if you hit no traffic, like it's, right, it's right. big, you know. It just, there's not that many people upstate. I would say, yeah. like, past, um, like, Kingston is like, that's like borderline between where it gets like really unpopulated. I, I haven't been there, but I've been around that area. Right, right. And, uh, but then you really go upstate. There's a few big, like there's Buffalo, Syracuse, like there's a couple of cities, but like it's mostly just like dead. But even it's really that, nice. Yeah. I mean, even, even like you talk about Syracuse, that's more of like because it's big because it was a college town, though, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. For the most yeah, part. Yeah. Syracuse. It's a lot of these towns, they were like former like industrial towns that were like turned into college towns. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Buffalo is not that great, though. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I had a friend who was uh, in the military there, so I used to go visit him a bunch. Right. And uh, it's not not the best. <laughs> but he, he moved. Yeah, it's kind of like you're going to what, Sarasota area? No, St. Pete area? St. Pete, that? yeah, yeah. St. Pete's nice. That's There's really like, nice. If you go like uh, – like downtown to the little business district area. That's really cool down there. Mm -hmm. right now, there's my, uh, I have a son who used to live in St. Pete. Oh, really? Lives, lives in down there. And then I went to school, I went to college in Tampa. So mm -hmm. that's not too far away. No, it's so, only like 20, a 20 minute drive. Yeah. And Sarasota's got some beautiful beaches too. I know. Yeah. I haven't been to Sarasota, but I'm looking forward to it. I mean, there's so, a lot to do in that area yeah, you, you gotta check out sarasota's beach it's like the sand is literally like white powder really it's so so fine and beautiful yeah um chris leslie you know in the studio he uh he after he graduated from tampa tech where i met him mm -hmm. so we, we both went to college together he uh went to went to a ringing school of art and design oh nice and, and that's in sarasota so i'd visit him there he was not too rich for my blood so um but I went there and visited him, and he would show. He'd take us to the beach and stuff like that. Man, the beaches were beautiful. That's awesome. Well, yeah, like no, most towns, you still got certain areas you got to stay stay clear of and be careful of. And you know, of course, St. Peter, right. I haven't heard that too much about, but like I know St. Tampa. Pretty, I mean, it's been very. I I'm not super familiar with the area, but I've been going for a long time because I have cousins there. Right, and right, I right. have one. I have one cousin who like owns a bunch of bars, which are they're really nice. Mm -hmm. And I, my parents are moving down there. So I went and visited, you know, a few months ago and we were just like, right. this is so nice. Like, why don't we just live here? Right. <laughs> well, think about it. Everybody comes to Florida vacation. So if you can exactly. survive down here and actually have a, a way to support yourself, well, you can, you can vacation and live here at the same time. Why not? Exactly. I mean, I, I work remotely and I always have. So like, I, I don't think I've ever gone to an office maybe for like six months of my life. So like, yeah, see, why not? Exactly. I, I'm yeah, not yeah. And that's my point right there. Cause I, I know your situation. I'm like, if you can survive, not have to go to a nine to five job to, to survive. Why not? I exactly. Mean, like, that's one of the things we look at. We're like, you know what, if we move, you know, we're going to be, no matter where we go, we're go we love Volcano Bay in Orlando. Um, We'll be away from Disney World, which is good and bad. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, people people visit it. You know, they come here for, for vacation, and we can go to it any time of the year. So we'll lose that. Right. So, you know, it's, it's factors like that you always got to keep in, keep in mind. I think Maybe we'll, as we get closer, we'll figure that stuff out. Yeah, there's, there's pros and cons to every living situation, you know? Yeah. To me, I, I'm easy because it's like I can – Wherever I lay my head, that's my home. So, right, but because uh, I've, there was a time in my life where I was moving literally every six months to a year. Oh wow, and, yeah, it's, and it's um, crazy. and and no, I'm not a military brat, so it wasn't that. It's just me and my brother moved a lot. We just didn't feel comfortable in any place. So we'd say, sure, yeah, fair Lisa, enough. Lisa's up, let's move. Right. Um. So I'm used to that. She's not. She's owned this home for 27 years. Mm -hmm. So she's like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's a it's a big transition to make that kind of kind of move, you know. It is like if, if you're not used to living. I mean, 
even for me, I've I've either lived in New York or traveled my whole life. I don't think I've ever spent more than like a week in Florida. So it's it's a big change. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely definitely would be a change for you. But, but I'm I'm excited though. I I, I think it is. It's an adventure. I mean, yeah. that's how you look at it. You say, you know what, this is an adventure. And you and Alex are still young too, so you'll be able to say, you know what, if if you didn't like it, let's say worst case scenario, you didn't like it, you say, you know, we didn't like it, we tried it. You know, we, we made some money on the condo because you'll always be able to flip it later on anyway. Of course, yeah, yeah. And um, we tried it. So, and exactly. if you do like it, then you say, I'm glad we did this while we were young because we found out where we wanted to be. You know, you're you're in a very enviable situation. Yeah, I, I thank you. I, I agree. I mean, we don't have kids yet or anything. So, like, it's not. Um, right, right. You know, yeah, we don't have to exactly. worry about that. Yeah, see, I, I do. So I always have to, like, anywhere we go, I got to look at the school districts. I got to look at, of course, you know, if, if I wanted to start a business again, um, which, which I do, I'll, I'll probably, wherever we go, I'm going to look to probably start like a printing industry, printing business or something like that. Oh, nice. I'll have to, I'll have to look at that kind of income. Mm-hmm. And yes, don't think that that won't help CCS any because, yeah, it will. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I thought about that as well. Um, so I always have to keep in check of what the economy is like in that area, what the uh, school districts are like in that area, what's the crime rate, um, all that fun mumbo. Yeah, jumbo. exactly. There's just, as a parent, there's more considerations. Like I, I didn't even care about that. Cause I'm like, oh, I don't have a yeah. so, you know, like yeah, I'm, not, yeah. I'm probably not going to live in that condo in 10 years or I mean, not, not that we're going to, but when, when our kids in school, it'll be, you know, 10 years or whatever. So it's not something I need to be concerned about right now. Well, that I'll be honest, because uh, you, uh, you may remember I lived in the condo in uh, Ormond by the sea a while back before we came. Right. Yeah, I house. do remember that. Yeah. And oh my gosh, it was actually, and you can even ask Iva, Cadre basically, he'd go out his back door and mm-hmm. bam, he was on the beach. That's awesome. And he misses that. You know, he basically grew up on the beach because of that. Sure. Iva, Iva was like, this is the best I've ever lived in my life. And we had the opportunity to buy that condo, mm-hmm. but we didn't want to pay for like, there's a lot of like homeowners association, not homeowners, but the uh, maintenance fees. HOA, and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 And you end up paying more for that than you do the freaking mortgage. On it's the place. true. I think so, my HOA is like almost half of my mortgage. <laughs> like, And that's probably on the cheap end. Yes, honest, it is. Because I've, I've heard of some people paying more for that than they do for the mortgage. And I'm like, eh, we don't want to get in that position. No. Um, in fact, before we moved out, the people that owned the condo, they were like, um, pull over the rent. Well, keep you in there. You know, they, they actually wanted us to stay. And mm-hmm. like, uh, no, we really have to do what's responsible and get back to this house and get it fixed up and, right. and move forward. It was, it was a tough call, though, because, like, I was, she, she loved that condo. She loved being there. She loved being able to just go out to the pool or walk on the beach every day. And, in mm-hmm. fact, I just had a – a memory come up on my Facebook stuff that showed Cadre when he was t- uh, two years old. Uh, me, um, Iva's son, which is 24 now. So back wow. then, see, he, he was what, 15? This is nine years ago it came up. It said memories from nine years ago. Mm-hmm. And looking at him and, and had her stepdaughter or her daughter on there. And so let's see, she's 29. So she was 20. It's like, whoa, talk about flashback. I know, it crazy. it's crazy. So time said, really flies. Yeah, it does. I mean, I'm like, goodness, and I'm not getting any younger. You know, <laughs> it, it, I, I think we ever looked this pretty all the time. I mean, geez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you even laugh at that. <laughs> how long have we known each other? Like eight years or something? Like it's been a long time. No, it's been, it's been a bit longer than that, I think. I think, so. I think you're right, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, I think we didn't get like, no, I think it was long. Yeah, it had to be more than that because um, if I was in the condo, I think – no, we might have met once I got in the condo. It's hard to mm-hmm. say. I, I don't know. It's, it's been, been a long time. time. Like, it's yeah. been a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's just so, crazy how much – so it's cool. We're finally you know, getting this book out, and people are going to be able to see it, and it's going to yeah. be – Yeah, people actually get to see some of the fruits of the labors, and, um, and what's really cool about that is the fact that we've had a lot of people – you know. They've been staying true with this and hanging in there and saying, yeah, I can't wait till you get something out. So I know. This yeah. For, this is for all nice those to, people, you know, 
it's nice to see over the years that like even without much momentum, the you know fan base around some of these characters has grown, which has been cool. You know, yeah, that speaks to just like the design and everything. So it's like that's great, you know. And yeah. now now we'll actually have a book and people can buy it and then we'll have yeah. more books and that's awesome. Yep. It's been it's been a long time coming. I know. But it's but, just uh, like we, we had to take our, our fate into our own hands, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a scary, it's a scary endeavor. It's a scary jump, but, um, you know, they say nothing ventured, nothing gained. And it's true. No, I mean, and, listen, when, when and I'll be honest, out, I was, I was totally blown away and humbled that we got funded in four days. Think I know. I know. Yeah. I, I can't believe yeah. it. I mean, that you know, for anyone on the stream, if you know, thank you so much for supporting this book. Like I know. Right. Um, cause it, this wasn't even the first book we planned on putting out first. It was, but the way things worked out and you were, you stepped up and said, you know what, let's get this stuff out of here and do it. Let's yeah. get going. you're like, I said, you know what, you got it. And it just works out because it's, you know, storylines and older storylines. So it wouldn't even affect any of the stuff we had going modern day. Exactly. Yeah. It has nothing. Uh, to if do anything, it, actually, it works out because it sets a precursor to what's to yep. come in modern day. So, you know, it creates a little bit of history for the, for the universe too. Definitely. It's really, yeah. It's, it's really it's, cool. It'll be good. Yeah. I, I think people will really, really enjoy it. It's a good story. I, I mean, I, if I'm you biased, do say so I'm yourself, <laughs> right? Nah, it, it is. It really is. And I was saying earlier on the stream, I don't know if you caught or not, cause you just joined me here, but I was telling people, you know, there's things about this character that makes him different than your prototypical. He's not, he's not a Captain America. Uh, you know, knockoff. That's that's no, the thing about him. He all, actually honestly. has his own character, and what creates him, what makes him who he is, is really what makes him unique. Period. You know, it, he he can tap into all the different things that you know, like Marvel's trying to do that with like Falcon taking over Captain America stuff. You know, it has to do with like racism stuff like that. But what's right. cool about American Eagle is he wasn't. You know, he he's always had the ideals of what he wanted. And what he believed in the country with his parents. And if during the time where he grew up, the Japanese were the people being persecuted yes. and, and put away in interim camps like his parents and stuff like that, which which is I was telling people that that's part of his origin and it's not even tapped into in this issue. I think but, there's like one shot of it at the end for the sport. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think you hit to it. Yeah, yeah. But we don't go into like how he got his powers, nothing like that, because even that has nothing to do with who this character is. No. You know, that was just an incident that happened while he was, you know, fighting for the country he lives, he loves and stuff like that. And uh, that was actually that, that his whole origin. Unlike a lot of characters, his origin, again, hmm, excuse me. Yeah, I don't know why I got gas. Oh, yeah, dude. I went to Mexican restaurant before I went to church. Um, his origin isn't what makes him. You know, even no. that doesn't make him. It's it's who he was before it, and what what he decides to do with his abilities after he gained them. Um, that's what really makes him who he is. And that's what I like about American Eagle. Definitely. I mean, you know, it's important. It's important for like, you know, obviously, like with Captain America too. You know, you're all about integrity and things like that. But it's it's coming from a different lens and like a different perspective. Exactly. And I think that's what makes it interesting. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And hopefully the people will agree as well. I think so. I mean, at least a lot of people bought the book. So. Right. And for those that uh, that don't know, they can still pre-order the book. And I yes. will make sure I uh, get the, the Indiegogo I link. Drop the yeah, link on there right now. I've ordered it since actually the campaign ended. Yep. We had a couple of little late orders because they weren't able to make the campaign. Which is um, fine. I mean, that's one of the reasons why, you know, before we... We don't yet have like a full fledged e commerce shop, but uh, it's nice yeah. to be able to sell through the page. Which I am working on still. We're going to nice. have a new site up here soon. Our site is down at the moment because I'm doing things with That's it. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I am going to. Here's a link for those people that uh, want to actually go get a copy of it. So make sure you go check out the Indiegogo site and. Uh, and while I'm on here, I will say hi to Dakari, the professor that chimed in on YouTube. 
not sure who you are, but hey, thanks for joining us on a, on a stream. Yes, thank you. And uh, if you haven't checked out American Eagle, there's the link down below. Check it out. I will leave that up here as I work because I should need to look at it, see if there's a way I can do this smaller. Hmm. Let's put me and you in the side. There we yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. That, that yeah, I think that made it a little bit better. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, now, are people able to do any of the tiers while there or just order the book? I think they can buy any of the tiers. Yeah. It's just really? as though the campaign were still live. Okay. Well, I'm telling well, you. Te technically, it is. You can still order it. So, you know, if you want posters or, you know, or just digital copies or whatever, you, whatever you'd like, you could order I might be a little late to be appearing in the book, of course, but um, yeah, that I think we already. And that's pretty much closed up oh, and done. Yeah. Um, but like, if let's say they wanted their name in the book, we might be able to slide that maybe like dedication page or something, put it in there. Yeah, yeah, that that we haven't made yet, so that's that's yeah. still open. Yeah. So. What I'm doing here. All right, let's do this. Here's a little trick I do sometimes. What I'll do is if I hold on. See my little outline. And there we go here. Javier really stepped up his game in these pencils too. Oh my god, yeah, he did an excellent job. He real he really uh went above and beyond. Yeah, because like if you look at his pencils before, and then he said, you know what? I've learned a few things. I'm going to go back and apply them yes. to, the, to the pages and stuff. I'm like, dude, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was pleased. I mean, I like Javier's work anyway. That's why we had him on here. But Of course, but he, he really brought his, I would say, A-plus game to this book, yeah. which is great. And, you know, sometimes good things are worth waiting for, you know. Exactly. And uh, cause we wanted to come out with this book, like, end of March was our goal, but – with things that are happening and the stuff of like that. And we did we go can. back and make changes and stuff. And I think the, you know, those people that ordered it, I think personally, I mean, that's just me talking, but I think they're going to be like, wow. It was worth I think it. they're going to be blown away by it. Honestly, it, it looks yeah. so good. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, we'll know because they'll let us know. And I hope they do. I want them to, I want them to say, you know what? I waited for this or, Wow, I'm glad I waited yeah. for this. I think uh, it's worth waiting for. You know, I, I would rather take longer, a little longer, and put out a book that's really quality because it's our, our first book, you know? Yeah. Well, come out, come like out the gate right. Rushing it out. I mean, you know, like anyone who, who backs it or has backed it, um, I think we'll we'll be really satisfied with it. Yep, I do too. Story alone, alone would be worth its weight and then we're working hard to make it sure the artwork makes it worth the weight as well. Definitely. I think, uh, I think the whole book is really going to come together and it, it already is. I mean, this, this is just one page out of how many pages is this book again? 22 or maybe 20 or 22. 22, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, it's really, it's really has. I mean, Javier came out of the gates and, and I like the fact that he actually went back because yes, he could have just been content with what we had and said, you know what, that's what I did. That's what you're going to get. And that's what a lot of artists did. They say, I've done my pages. We said, Hey guys, sure. let me, let me come back and knock out a couple of things that I'd like to fix or I'd like to improve because I've learned things along the way. And I'm like, and we did cause you know, I wasn't ready for it yet anyway. And, uh, the things he did i'm like wow dude yeah you go with your bad self definitely i think it it was worth waiting to do this because now we're we were all really in a good place to like make it happen you know yeah, yeah. like in you know years ago when we were trying to get everything together it was like you know we were very happy to get that preview book out when we did yep. and yep. that was great but you know it's a preview book like end of the day you know people yeah, want exactly. people want to read a total story you know mm -hmm. So given that we've been able to do this and, you know, actually get it funded and like, you know, people are, people have bought the book. Like that's fantastic. Yeah, it is. Not like the slime in the mouth. Okay. 
Oh, just kidding. I don't have a script in front of me, so I couldn't say what he's yelling. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Writer. <laughs> just kidding. I mean, I, I think I originally wrote the script for this in maybe like 2014 or something. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a while. So I know you had to go I mean, back I, and I edit I went back and did some editing, but, you know, for the first draft yeah, at least. Yeah. And it's hard to believe. I know. It's, cra it's just crazy, like, how, you know, what do they say? Like, it takes years to make an overnight success, right? Right. <laughs> it's like, that's what we're it's hoping. Like, we're hoping it becomes an overnight I, success. I think this will. And then, you know, we have another issue that I had already written uh, for the whole Vietnam arc. You know, we have other yeah. books in the pipeline too. So, you know, there's, I think there's a lot to look forward to. And I think if we just do it one book at a time right now and make sure we do them right in a few years, we'll have a real stable of characters, you know? Yeah. Get the corner verse out there into the public. Exactly. And then once you, once you have initial issues for, you know all the car all the major characters. Then, then you have a company. You know, then, yeah. oh, then speaking, buy the book. Speaking of which, um, remember when uh, we got the opportunity to put a couple of characters in the Bullet Maker? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I forgot Ryan did that, right? Yeah, I got my copies uh, day before yesterday. Yeah, um, I saw the uh, what was it? The, the guy, the, the, the guy that was behind it, got hands so He actually sent me a couple of copies, comp copies, because I wasn't able to actually contribute other than making sure the work was get, getting done. And I contacted him and he sent me some comp copies. And uh, I, I, like I said, I just got them before yesterday in Eastern and I haven't got a chance to actually look through them. But uh, our stuff looked pretty good, man. I got to say. That's awesome. All our guys did their jobs and the characters looked good. So you got a brief Eternatech origin story in there, Vault mm. origin story. And then you got um, Ryan's character, Mammoth Monk, got his That's story awesome. in there. And, uh, that's good. I, I mean, good, good I for think Ryan. represented pretty good. Yeah, going out there hustling and you yeah. know making sure that you know getting some characters out there. That's great. I mean, yeah. So we can actually say we do have characters out here that are published that have their own um, stuff going on. So that was cool. And Volt was one of those characters that you know we we kind of dropped for a little while because it wasn't really along the lines of what we were going for at right. the moment because it was kind of it's, it was going to be like a, a dark horror. But um, it's like really dark. So this actually gave that character a chance to shine because that audience is more into the darker kind of things. So it worked out. And then, um, which is really good because I think Vault has a lot of potential. Definitely. Um, I mean, it, it, hits a, it hits a different genre audience than I think like some of our other characters do. So it, it, we're, we're, a lot of the stuff we're doing is a lot of superhero esque type things. Mm -hmm. But. Um, yeah, but horror is huge. You know, people love horror comics, so like. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I think that's going to be a character that is going to pick up really good. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, we do have him. He's in the Kinetic World Tour book mm. that that we have already in the works. He's in the book, so mm -hmm. it's not like we didn't plan on doing anything with him because we actually had a created team on it. He's already got a couple issues written on it, which right. we're, we're doing the rewrites on it. But um, yeah. He came out good. Rick Benia did the artwork on the inside, and you know we love Rick's work anyway because. Oh yeah, Rick's fantastic. You know, if you remember, he did the uh, the Kerr. Yes, I, story. I I saw his vault pages too because him and yeah. Ryan and I were on a stream like a while ago when they were working yeah. on it. And it really good. And Rick, man, he he's he spent some time in those pages too, man. He he went detailed as can be, like oh, so de his stuff was so detailed that you'll never see it in the, in the, in the printed pages. Let's put it that way. That's how much. Yeah. He's like, uh, you know, he'll spend like a month on a page, but like it, it shows, you it's, know, yeah, so detailed. It's not even funny. And, um, but yeah, it came out good. It came out good. Let me go check our stream real quick. Make sure there's no comments on there or anything. I don't want to leave anybody hanging too long. Nope. We're good. All right. So now go back to what I was doing. Cause I got to tell people they're not here to, Look at my ugly mug. I want to see some work being done. So, um, but yeah, let me zoom out here. So, show everybody what, we're, what we got here going on. So just drop yeah, in the white. It's great. Yeah. Drop in the white, white layers so people can see actual just inked work. That's, that shot came out pretty good. 
Definitely. Oh, it looks looks really good. Let's see that. That was a fun panel. Crack! Nice. I did it. The reverse inking there. White inks. Come on, boys! <laughs> Yeah, it looks great. That's where we're at so far. Nice. Real real action shots there. All right. Is it, and this is only page six, folks. I know. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot going on. I mean, it's I would say there's some good character moments too, but you know, it's 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 in it's a war comic for sure. Like there's a lot of action going on. Yeah. And yeah, the real detailed in-depth stuff comes later on. Oh yeah. When it comes, when it comes to story wise. Definitely. Of course, in the beginning, you see a little bit of the uh, troubled spirit right away. Yes, which is, which is good. The, you know, the yeah. it's this is sort of like told in in flashback, like as the mm. story. So, like it's um, you know, American Eagle exists in our modern world, but you know, he's he's a little not old, but you know, he's he's older than he's he was. experienced. He's experienced no. exactly, but you know, he doesn't he doesn't age at the the normal rate, obviously. Yeah, right. and that's I explained a little bit in the very beginning of the stream. I was talking about how, you know, this is him after he's already been American Eagle Eagle for a long time. You know, he's not like a young pup out the gates at, at this storyline because this storyline he'd already gone through World War II, right? You know, where, he, where he got Korea, his ability, you know, and you know, so he'd already been around the block a few times. So, right, yeah, he's at this point been the been the character the character of American Eagle, the superhero for like you know, 20 years or whatever. Yeah. So it, it's not, you know, it's not, it's nothing new for him. If anything, he's a little jaded in the yeah, role yeah. For, exactly. for various, for various reasons, you know? Yep. And, uh, I simply said, you know, this is, this is the reason we went with this, this story on here was because this was like a turning point in his life and career and stuff like that. But I didn't want to go, I didn't say too much other than that. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to give away, give away the farm here, yeah. but just, uh, right, exactly. But you know, it, it was, it, it was an eye opener. Definitely. It's just and, like, uh, yeah, it's, you know, cause obviously, uh, you know, for, it was for a lot of people in that, that era, you know, people are like, Whoa, what the hell? Definitely. When I really ended up rewriting a lot of this book, cause I had originally written it and then I went to actually went to Vietnam afterwards. And oh yeah. Yeah. And I, I saw a lot of the, uh, you know, the sites of Vietnam War and things like that. And, you know, it's so messed up. Like there are people on still on the street who like were um, who had gotten infected by Agent Orange. Right, and, like, right. You know, it's it it affects like generations. So like their children are like mm -hmm. messed up and like, you know, have all like deformities and things like that. So it's really something, you know, I I think that as you know, it's it's not was not a great moment for our country so it's something that yeah. you know american eagle be right there in the middle comes of to that conclusion <laughs> like you know and yeah. i mean in this scene he's fighting american soldiers and you know yeah. you'll, you'll see why in the book but you know it's it's not just like oh the you know vietnam vietnamese are bad i mean not at all it's you know it's a complicated war i mean yeah. all, all war is complicated but this war was particularly complicated mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I knew you, you traveled all over. I didn't know you actually went to Vietnam. No, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I spent like two months there, and that's that's when I kind of revisited this book and I totally rewrote it. See everybody, yeah, the world traveler Daniel Horowitz here, ladies and gentlemen. Him and his <laughs> yeah. lovely wife. Yes, I wife and I travel. Alex on the map. Actually, I think we've been to like fifty countries now, or something, which is crazy. Well, I mean, the thing is, is like, it's like you told me before, and I, always, I tell Ivor this all the time, a reminder. I say, you know, you realize that Dan told me once that he was able to go travel around the world and still be cheaper than living in New York City. Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. You know, that just, that's mind-blowing, though, if you think about it. I mean, you know, it, you're able to travel the world, explore all these different countries, and it's cheaper than living at home. Of, definitely. <laughs> I spend much more money now that I live in the city and I, 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 I loved living in the city, but you know, now it sucks because like, it's, 
I mean, my, my perspective has changed and just like, it's significantly worse because of COVID. But so for me, the cost was worth it, but I, I saved a lot of money traveling, honestly. And that's how I was able to afford to get a nice place here and, you know, live a good life. I don't, I think if I had moved to the city when I was much just, younger, I don't think I, would have, I wouldn't have saved as much money, you know? All right. Yeah, see, it's 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 crazy how that works out, but I'm glad it did. Definitely, yeah, it was great. I mean, you know, you go to a lot of a lot of countries in like Southeast Asia, and I, you know, I I love all of them, and I've been to all of them, but the cost of living is very low, and you know, you're coming in, especially if you can work online, you're coming in with your American salary, and you know, you can live pretty well. Right, exactly, because so, that, that American dollar stretches a lot further there than it does here. Oh, that's for sure. definitely. I mean, you can get a nice meal in Vietnam for like, you know, five bucks, seven bucks at a restaurant. Whereas like, that's not happening here. <laughs> like, right, exactly. You know, if I, if I go out to, you're lucky to go 40 bucks here. So in New York, it's 60, $70 to go out to eat. You know, yeah, at, a, at, a, at a nice place. Like there's a place here that, um, called Charlie horse that mm. here in Daytona, they do a, all you can eat crab legs. Hmm. And yeah, it's wonderful. It used to be like forty, forty-five dollars a person for mm -hmm. that. And me and Iva, not to talk out of term, but we can eat some crab legs. <laughs> in fact, it, it got to the point where there was one Chinese restaurant that used to do it in Palm Coast, mm -hmm. and uh, they asked us to leave. <laughs> You're eating too much. They say you eat too many crab legs. No crab legs for you. I'm sitting my butt down exactly, but um, but we go there and what they do is if you eat a lot and you continue mm -hmm. to eat a lot, what they start doing is they get your crab legs a little soggy, mm. but they're putting them in a little soggier, which makes them saltier. Oh, and uh, so basically you don't like it. Now I'm one of those jerky people though, <laughs> where if I notice that, I don't bother eating them. I say, mm -hmm. you can take these, take these back to the kitchen and another, I need another batch. Damn. I mean, I'll, listen, like I'll make them come back. Crab legs, like. Right. And I'll make them come back with a new batch every time. Mm -hmm. Now that was like 40, 45 bucks a piece. Now it's a hundred to $150 per person. Wow. That's, how, that's how much that's changed. And I'm like, no, I got my, I got, I got my limits. I, I can't, I can't rationalize spending that kind of money. Even on oh, crab legs. Not right. when I can, not when I can go to Publix and get, like five pounds of crab legs, bring them home for under 60, 70 bucks and eat out of my comfort of my own home. So for a hundred and hundred fifty dollars per person, you can go grocery shopping for weeks for family. Right. Right. And I'm like, nah, that's all right. Thank you though. Yeah. Thanks that's, enough, okay. enough that's crazy. Yeah. I've noticed that the, the prices in, and you know, for me, like I'm used to paying for things in New York. So obviously like that's my perspective, but I even noticed going down to Florida, I was like, this is, you know, and, that's that area granted but i'm just like it's more expensive than i thought it would be but a you know, things I, have gone up too because of all the stuff going on because um like i noticed like the price of eggs mm -hmm. uh, milk chicken chicken had a i think they had a shortage or something somewhere um so like eggs and stuff like that chicken wings if you go any restaurants to try chicken wings they cost more now uh because of that um Stuff like that has gone up a lot, whereas it was like dirt cheap before. Like I'd get like a gallon of milk, it was like three oh two, and now it's like three fifty, and that's not a lot. Don't get me wrong, but it is when you're used to a certain amount and you, you right. You're but it, it adds you're eating up. a lot. You're not mm -hmm. just buying one thing of milk once. Like you're buying five things of milk every time. You, no, you have a whole family. Like yeah. So you know it it adds up quick. You know, yeah. I'm a comic artist. I don't make a lot of money. You're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. Like I, I was, I just wanted to go get a haircut yesterday, and I, you know, I have been going to this place for a few years, and you know, it's been a twenty dollar haircut, which is you know why go, and they just were like, oh, the price is twenty five dollars now. I'm like, versus two months ago, like what changed? Like yeah, it's like mine changed. Mine went from like ten to thirteen. Now? Yeah, mine went from ten to thirteen. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like. The, the price went up by, you know, almost 20%. Like, it's crazy. Like, I, I want to go, you don't have as many employees now. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, too soon. Too soon. Yeah, for that exactly. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just, 
what I, like whatever. I'm I'm ready to move. <laughs> like, right. Nah. Like I said, like I told you when, I, when we texted each other, I said when you get situated, you better make sure you let us know in your housewarming party. Definitely. So, yeah, you you guys are totally invited. How far is it from Daytona to like the the Tampa area? Uh, we can get we can get to Tampa by about two hours. Oh, that's not that bad. No. Yeah, it seems like a, a lot of like Florida. It you know, I was driving around because we we actually went down to uh, the the Keys when mm-hmm. I was there um, a few uh, nice. months ago. It was nice. Yeah, we we drove to Fort Myers and then we took a ferry there, which mm-hmm. was pretty cool. And right. it was just it wasn't that hard to do. Like it it seems like it's really easy to get around. Yeah, just be careful if you're ever on I four. Mm. I four they say is like there's an accident every three minutes or something like that. Yeah, I, I can see that. And that's, Honestly, and, that's I don't... The, and that's the main drag between like Orlando, Tampa, Daytona. Gotcha. That's all okay. that. So that's always be careful on that road. Otherwise, you know, I think seventy five to seventy five is not too bad. Um, I remember back back then. It's been a long time since I've traveled like the Tampa area. Right. Yeah, I mean, what's funny is you'll be close to like Javier lives in the Tampa area. Oh, does he really? I, I didn't think he lives in Zephyr Hills, I believe. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to meet him. That would be, that would be fun. In fact, we got a few studio members in that same area, if I'm not mistaken. Like John Jackman lived there. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, there's a few of them. You'll be, you'll be in the uh, playing fields of a lot of our guys. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's a great area. I think you know. That's why I went to camp. I went to college in Tampa. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tampa as a city, I was like, it was okay. I like St. Yeah. Pete better, definitely. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a better city. Uh, I uh, I didn't stay in Tampa after I graduated, so let's put it that way. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I, I didn't like looking over my shoulder every time I went down down the street. Oh, is it not? The night? I, I really don't know. I've only been there no. like for an afternoon. No, it's, it's, it's okay. It's just... Um, you just gotta be careful. That's all. Like like any big city. I mean, it's not like yeah, it's, I mean, I, it's the I only in city in the world like that. But you know, right, right. Like Brooklyn is not. I mean, you know, the joke is it's gotten a lot worse lately. But it was pretty fine, I would yeah. say. For before COVID, it was like very nice actually. But oh, really? you know, it's, well, it's you wouldn't think like, you wouldn't think something like COVID would affect it like that. Well, it's just like because it got so hit so badly and especially like in underserved areas so like uh, so you know, they, cut, they like cut yeah. funding to the hospitals and like things like that and like mm. you know it it's just like it i think they said you know it's like twenty thousand people died in like a month so oh. yeah it's like a lot it's yeah. crazy like that you know you, you you know the the amount of people who are dying now you know it's like maybe a thousand people in the country a day like it's nothing yeah in, in comparison to like what it used to be like you yeah. know you can you can more or less live your life normally that would de- that would de- that would demoralize an area too i mean if you're losing that many people that fast oh my god every day i, I was I, I don't live too far from a hospital so like every day i was hearing like ambulances and blah blah, blah. like it was very like it's like apocalyptic i guess that's, that's pretty wild yeah it was it was not great <laughs> like, I, I it didn't it didn't hear, hear like that by I don't no think means. it hit anywhere in the country like it did here. Yeah. It's probably because like you're always so crowded, though. I mean, you're all, like, right on top of each it's, other. Some of that, some of it is, like, um, they didn't shut down the city until, like, way later than they needed to. Like, other cities, like San Francisco, Seattle, you know, they're not as densely populated as New York, but they're pretty populated. They shut down, like, weeks before, and that's what needed to happen. And, you know, it's like at the time, like it was just too, you know, lax. It was too lax. So, like, you know, by the time, like, they got a handle on it, it was like too far spread. So, it, it's just, it's like, you know, if you would, we had had like better, better leadership, I guess, during the time. Yeah, it's rough. But, you know, onward and upward, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty done with living here. All right. You'll be on a new horizon soon. Exactly. So how how's the uh, married life treating you, man? It's great. I mean, I've been married almost three years now, so it's been a Are while. Are you serious? Yes. I mean, time flies, you know. 
Oh my gosh. Yes. I, so, I still remember y'all talk, just talking about it. It's like, what? No, no, it was wow. not recent. <laughs> like, but yeah, yeah, no, it's it's great. You know, um, I would say as good as our relationship was before we've gotten married, it's been even better. So that's wonderful, man. That's awesome. You all yeah. deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. And it's been, you know, it's been exciting. Alex has been, she's actually in Washington right now. She uh, uh yeah. she's at a conference for for travel bloggers. So, you know, she's killing it. Like she, I think she'll be a speaker next year at all these conferences. And, you know, her blog is huge now. Like it's great. You know, she's getting maybe like 50,000 people a month reading her. Oh, wow. Stuff. Yeah. So that's I, can't wait, I, I can't wait till Herbert gets out there. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I've learned a lot about, you know, running a business and everything. Cause I've been helping her with all the stuff. Right. But you know, it's it's nice to be to be married and be able to do that together. I feel like it really adds to your relationship, you know. Right. No, that's awesome. Yeah, it's been great. And maybe people might be wondering why our stream stopped on the uh, artwork. It's saving right now, so. Oh yeah, yeah. it's back. Took a second. Give it a minute. Yeah, especially I'm, I ink at twelve hundred dots per inch. Oh, wow. Okay. So where most people might do it at 300 on these pages, I'm doing a little extra. Yeah. I've noted very, very granular. Work. Yeah. When I like, so that when I'm working and I go and zoom in, it's, it's going to be tight. And uh, a lot of the time when I, when people digital link or something, they do like 300 DPI, I'm doing it 1200 DPI. Mm -hmm. So that way when I do shrink it down, it's going to be even much more tighter. I do that with a lot of my digital links anymore. I want to be able to get people. I think that's good. Them. I mean, you know, you have the ability to with the computer. So, like, why wouldn't you? All right. Now, the downside of that is the file sizes are usually bigger and it might slow down a little bit here. Oh, and there, well, sure. But, yeah, yeah. But of course. the upside and is it's about the results. So, exactly. And end of the day is, you know, I I would rather, you know, I mean, think about it. I can do stuff like that in a matter of seconds. Right. Like doing it, how doing long would that, would, would that would take me forever doing it by hand. That would take hours by hand just to do mm -hmm. the gun, which yep. is crazy. I want to put that in a different layer too, in case I had to change my mind. Yeah, something else I can do by hand. Like I could just turn that off now. You know, so exactly. Like if you're like, ah, I don't like that, you could you could mm -hmm. just get rid of it. Yeah, it's it's so much more. There's there's no reason you would need to do it by hand. No, the stuff I do do by hand, do do. Um, mm -hmm. The stuff I do by hand is like if I'm doing a cover or something that I want the original piece for, mm -hmm. I'll still do that by hand. Or if I'm doing something for a customer, I'll do that by hand. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, because then it's something they can have physically, you know. Right. Of course. Be, right. But be, for, for sequential art, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Not for the, not for their. You know, I, I hate to call it one of the mill work, but it, it is. It's, you know, it's, it's the stuff that you're just getting stuff published. You're not reselling the pages. Now, if this is like something I was doing, like when I did work for like Marvel and DC stuff, it'd be different because I can turn around and sell the pages for more. But right. independent work until we get, you know, stupid popular and famous. Yes. Which, you know, it's, you know. there's not a huge demand yet. So. Actually, you know, so some, I think someone did buy a page. Yeah, 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 they yeah. did. It's a good friend of mine, actually. Yeah, which was nice. It was very nice of him. So I'll I'll have to physically give it to him. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you send that to Javi and me. We'll send yeah, it I up. will we'll sign it up. Yes, I'll. Or you can just send it to me, and I, I could give it to him. Like he's one of my. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. You know, as we get the page, we'll make sure that um, Javier signs it. Yes, definitely. Because. Um, he has all the, he does all the pencils. So I think, I think he still does all the pencils by hand. So really? Wow. Good for him. I think he does. Um, That's so then yep, they'll actually get the original pencil page. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it was super worth waiting for personally. This know my little secrets here see that there we go hey that's cool like i, I like that a lot all right back up here back up 
Let me get all my area here. There we go. That way it gives me my hatching. There you go. There was a time that I would never do something like that because I'd be like, no, that's that's cheating. Screw that. It's not though. I mean, it's, it's a called getting, It's called. I finally had to commit and say, you know, what, I'm going to change with the times and actually go, you know, change with it because I right. fought it for a long time. Because I still, I still break out the quill pen and do a lot of stuff by hand. But um, they're definitely pros and to doing it by doing it digitally nowadays. Yeah, and end of the day, it's it's efficiency. I mean, like, mm -hmm. especially if you're doing sequential art, it's not just like, oh, I'm doing, you know, like a commission is, it's one page. Like, it's a single, it's not, a, it's not yeah. even a panel. It's just like a, sing, a singular drawing. So, like, mm -hmm. you can do it, but not not for something like this. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, you could, it would just take a long time, like, you know. I'll be like, honest with you, though. Here, here's, what's funny is I'm actually faster by hand. Really? Than I did traditionally. Mm -hmm. But I... I uh, I can't do. There's no way I can compete with how tight I can do it. You know, yeah, especially how I stuff like that. You know, than doing it digitally. Um, that so makes it's kind of it's kind yeah. of a catch catch twenty two because I am faster traditionally when it comes to doing contour and detail stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But again, it's like you don't have the undo button when you're doing it by hand, you know? So if you do mess up, well, guess what? You're going to have to really work hard to fix it on here. I can just right. say it, control Z and boom. <laughs> totally. We do it. Or I, what I, can, I like on digital is I can do it in layers too. So I can always do different things, try it. And if I don't like it, just turn that layer off. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. Exactly. Yeah. You, you can't, you can't like visualize things by hand mm -hmm. like that. So, But I'll be honest, it's doing it by traditionally for years and years. It mm -hmm. helps me on this end too, because I, I know what I can get away with without having to do a bunch of trial and error stuff too. Makes total sense. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, when you're using any computer program, there's like an element of automation, but then there's also the human element of like your experience and like, you know, mm -hmm. what you know, what you know will look good and what you don't know what will look good. But someone who comes in and is just using the program without any prior knowledge of inking yeah, it might not exactly. turn out so well All right and i've seen some really good artists that started doing their own inks digitally only and uh they couldn't ink really by hand but they're really good at doing digitally so you know hey, there you go yeah it works exactly. out for them too it's not necessarily like a bottleneck you know especially like you know younger younger artists who are coming in they're not gonna you know they'll they've always had the digital tools available to them yeah yeah, it's poor little brats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my friend Rich Parada, I think you know him, mm -hmm. who did oh, yeah. uh, who did Lord of the Twin Lands. He did the entire book by hand, mm -hmm. including the inks. And I I have all 180 of the pages. I I brought them down to my condo, and I'm just like, damn. How did you do this? Like oh, he's old school too. I mean, he did work for Marvel and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's in he's in England now. Oh yeah. Yeah, he got he got married to a woman in England, and now he lives there. So I, 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 I think, yeah, I read about that. That's right. I read him posting about that. Oh yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he said he's liking life a lot better now, ain't he? I think so. Yeah. I mean, you know, he was living in staten island which mm -hmm. is it's not like the best area of new york city it, it's it's just like it's different like it's it's like kind of halfway in between the suburbs and and the city and like you, you know you need a car and like it's just like his his living situation there was like not ideal so i think for yeah. him being in england is better gotcha i think it's a range there a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I lived there for a year when I when I uh, went to school there. And One of my good friends is he was English. He was born there and he moved to Florida. He said he'd never go back because he he totally. loves his son, and he goes he very rarely ever seen the son there. And I mean, and he still had a lot of the same cultural things that he had before. His name was Giles, and a really mm -hmm. good friend of mine. Now he lives in Vegas. Mm. Last I heard, he was an accountant for the Venetian. 
Oh, wow. And, for and, him. Uh, yeah, I'd met him because he worked at the binder manufacturer I worked at for years. And oh, years. nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would visit him out in Vegas when he moved out there and stuff like that. It was really cool. That's but, awesome. Uh, one of the things that he used to do is like when we went to Vegas, well, actually before that, like he'd have a six pack of beer behind his seat in mm -hmm. his car and he'd get off work. He'd go outside and he'd open a beer and have a beer. Well, he got there. It was like 90 degrees outside. So he'd drink the beer hot. He didn't care. That's why he liked it because that's oh, what I... English people, they drink their drinks warm. That is true. Yeah. And, uh, I was always like, man, I don't drink at all, but he, that made it even more repulsive to me. So <laughs> we, when I visited Vegas, right before he's a, he took me in, well, now my ex-wife, former wife, whatever you want to call her, mm -hmm. um, we went out there and he bought a gallon of milk before we went out to Death Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were going out to Death Valley and, and the truck overheated. He, he had, he goes, this happens all the time. Just give it a little bit of time. Uh, so what do you do? He, Grab behind the seat, grab that gallon of milk you bought. <laughs> it was already warm. He's just sitting there. Says, you want some? You want some? We're like, no, no, please, oh. no. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like, Dude, no way. Thank you, but no, thank you. I don't think so. so That's crazy. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, no way. Yeah, I would say uh, Vegas makes Florida look cool comparatively. <laughs> like, well, it's a different heat. You right. Know, there, there's a dry heat. Yes. You know, so here it's, you know, it's more like, uh, it's a lot more humid in Florida. So I really don't mind that weirdly. I don't know. Even like New York has become in the last five years, they consider it like a subtropical climate. So like really? it's, yeah, it's pretty humid here. I mean, you know, climate change and everything. So it's pretty humid here too. I mean, not in comparison to Florida, but um, yeah. you know, during, during the summers, like there are days where you're, you're hitting a hundred degrees now. And that, you oh, know, wow. so growing up so. when I was a kid, it was like, you know, you were never really hitting below, like, maybe 80, above, like, 85. Right. It's mind-boggling. It really it's is. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I would stay in Florida for, like, July and August, though. I think we would go travel. Yep, time to hit another country for a while. Exactly, yeah. Maybe go go down to, go to Europe or something. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we'll end up spending a lot of time there, but I think we'll end up being pretty part time and traveling the rest of the time because, you know, for us, we can do that. So. Yeah. It helps a lot. Yes. At least until we have kids. So <laughs> then, then we'll until be while you can. Exactly. No, I'll be honest with you, man. Cadre is like, biggest blessing i've ever had in my entire life oh I, I, sure he is such a good kid yeah i mean i wake up every day i wake him up for school and mm -hmm. it's just like oh, amazing it really yeah. is yeah i can't wait to meet him he seems like a wonderful kid yeah i don't know where he gets it from but, <laughs> but yeah he really is i could say that because you can't hear me so Right. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, go, to his head. go to his head or anything. You know, he's already exactly. a charmer as it is. <laughs> yeah, we just, Alex's brother just had a kid. So I guess I'm an uncle now. So that, that was exciting. Oh, congratulations, Uncle. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, she's really cute. Yeah, so Alex had went out to Montana to go meet her. And then she went to a conference in Washington. So I'm single for the week, which is pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't cook or anything. So like it's, I've been, oh, like, boy. Been Do, does years. Alice cook? Oh yeah. She's a phenomenal cook. Oh, wow. Well, see. Yeah. Didn't but I, I have no such gifts. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're roughing it. Pizza it is. Okay. Got yeah. I, you know, I really overate the first couple of days she was gone. So now I've been like just eating like crappy microwave meals because like, I just don't <laughs> want to eat too much. Right. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> like I had some Indian food in the microwave and like it was just fine, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, for five bucks, like, oh, it's, it's OK. I, like, I can handle that for a couple of days. Yeah, no problem. exactly. Yeah. I mean, she's back on Saturday, so it's not like it's that long. You, she comes back and you're like 30 pounds heavier. Exactly. You eat? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think I put on a couple of pounds since you've been yeah. gone. Like, I, was, I, I went to the gym yesterday and then I went on a bike ride. And I'm like, oh my God, this is not 
doing too well. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it could have went the other way. I mean, you could be starving yourself. And that's what some people that are used to eating good, and then they don't eat good. They just don't eat at all. And so it could be that. You know, you could look at the alternative. True. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's easy here because there's, there's so much good food, like, everywhere. Like, it's just like you, you can get good food, like, just walk right. outside your door and there's, like, 20 different places you can get, like, takeout or whatever. So it's, it's pretty easy to not starve. I gotcha. All right. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to sign off here. Sounds good. Yeah, the page but looks fantastic and you know it was great i'll have the page, have have the page done by the end of the night not a problem because awesome. really all i got left now is like all the bullets are floating right, around right. Them, and then the gun blast and some speed lines Sweet. and the frames yeah so can't, this, can't this done. awesome but uh thanks yeah thanks for joining me man that's of been course. Fun. absolutely yeah I'm, I'm glad i saw your message because i'm not on facebook that much so right so uh yeah and for those that did chime in thank you for joining us yes. and uh Thank Hope you so everybody much. checks out the American Eagle Indiegogo campaign. That's still live. It's it's over, but it's live, so you can still order stuff. Yes. And uh, go check that out. The link is in the comments. And uh, absolutely, you won't regret it. So. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, I just got a poster. Hold on. Andrew D. Sup, guys? Can't wait for this project to complete. Super exciting. Thank you, Crutchy. Yeah, I know Andrew. Okay, hey buddy, how's it yeah. going? Uh, yeah, no doubt. It's been, like I said, it's been a little delayed, but uh, I think it's going to be worth the wait. And um, it's okay. Such as, such as Andrew himself, you know, he, uh, he's he got a little vested interest in it because he ha he's he's part of the uh, the people that help fund it. So we thank you. Yes, thank you uh, so much. And um, once this file saves, uh, that's where the black screen is there. It's saving. Um, once that finishes saving, I'll uh, show a quick preview of the whole page. And da, 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 one second here. Let's find out why it's, I think it's, yeah, hold on. it's, hmm. uh, it's Manga Studio doing this thing again. I want to show everybody, but before I leave it, I want to show, give everybody a quick shot of what yeah. it looks like now. Take a picture. Yeah, right. And uh, we go back to my screen here. Do, 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 stream yard. There we go. And full page shot of it. Take that link down. All right. So here's start at the beginning. So everybody a little bit close up. Some of the work that you all have helped make happen. Yes. Looks really good. Two, panel three, panel four, panel five. Then big panel yes and then here's the full page for everybody there we go and like i said i'll have the rest of this page done tonight and i'll start page seven and what is this here oh, yeah, i got it finished on that arm okay and uh again for those that joined us thank you and i'll try to give some notice next time before i go back on and uh give it by some people a little more heads up if perfect not, yeah let me know. I'm happy to come Stay on tuned. with you anytime. You got it, buddy. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. And uh, until next time, Cornerstone All right. out. Have a good one. Thanks, good night, everybody. everybody.